The Japanese word for folding screen is byobu. Byobu essentially can literally translate as a windbreaker, which gets at the function of folding screens. These liminal types of uh, works of art, they are not only just beautiful paintings, two-dimensional paintings on a flat surface, but they're they're objects, they're sculptural, they're architectural in a sense. You can fold them and position them in different ways. It can conform to a, in an, a, a spatial setting. It can define a spatial setting. You can create temporary rooms through screens. They often serve also as uh, backdrops for ceremonial occasions or when receiving guests or in diplomacy. One will have screens as a, a beautiful backdrop. So we have a pair of screens behind me, so two screens. Screens typically come in pairs. And these screens from 1835, I think, right? Yeah, Kishiganko, who is a, um, a, a renowned artist during Japan's Edo period, Edo, E-D-O, that's the years 1615 to 1868, I believe. I think those are about the only precise dates in the entire history of art that I've actually committed to memory. <laughs> so the Edo period is a, uh, well, we often know it as the real heyday of the woodblock printing tradition, but a, a tremendous flourishing of arts and culture during the Edo period, named after Edo, the capital city, the new capital of Japan, Edo. And the city is still around, but it has a different name these days. Anybody know the modern name for the city of Edo? Yeah, Tokyo, right. So this was the new capital of Japan uh, during the Tokugawa shogunate, a military dictatorship. Um, but certainly during this period of, of military dictatorship, there was tremendous flourishing of the arts and culture. Uh, the, the artist Kishiganku is certainly renowned for his depictions of, well, tigers and dragons. <laughs> uh, he made a, a name for himself there. And so this was... This, Recent acquisition, just in the last year, we acquired this pair of screens, and uh, this was perhaps his final commission of, of, of the subject of dragons and tigers. Screens often come in pairs, traditionally. You have a left and you have a right. Although when, when read, I should say, if, if there is a bit of a, 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 a sequential narrative way in which one might read it, Customarily, you'll read it from right to left. These two screens could be interpreted either way, or perhaps they're best interpreted as a pair, as a unit. Often, screens will have, when they do come in pairs, they'll have uh, dueling opposites, you could say, contrasting elements. One side of the screen might be an autumnal scene, and the other side might be a spring scene, or winter versus summer. The two often then certainly highly relate to one another. This is also what we have with the dragon and the tiger, two quintessential creatures of East Asian uh, lore, legend, uh, spirituality, and art. We see the dragons and tigers celebrated time and time again in Chinese and Japanese art. They are natural opposites to one another. From Chinese Taoist philosophies, the, uh, the yin and the yang, so the, the two opposites. The, uh, the tiger is the passive, is the, is the feminine. The tiger is the, the wind. The tiger is the west and autumn. Whereas in contrast, the dragon, the dragon is the, the masculine. The dragon is the clouds, the sky, the celestial heavenly creature. The dragon is uh, a creature of the east as well and is the the spring, so we're in the time of the dragon, although it doesn't really feel like it outside. No, it's a little better today, though. Also, opposite creatures in other aspects. So the, the tiger is a creature of, of the earth versus the heavenly celestial dragon we already touched on. The tiger has the soft coat of, of fur. The dragon has these hard, rippling scales. The two creatures here also just seem to be billowing out of their clouds, the misty backgrounds, the shimmering golden clouds as a, a common visual element in traditional Japanese folding screens and often applied through gold leaf. And if you come really close and you take a look, 
You'll see certainly there's a tile square pattern, but within that you might find traces of smaller pieces of gold leaf foil applied to the surface here. And then the, the black pigment is painted on that background of the gold foil. So these, these highly fiercely expressive creatures. The dragon, interestingly though, while the tiger is a, a particularly belligerent, uh, ferocious creature, the dragon certainly has immense power and might, but it's, it's not inherently fierce or violent. A dragon generally is a benevolent creature and will only become aggressive, responding only to one's intention in kind. So it's said that a, a dragon will only become aggressive when it uh, perceives a drop of sweat on you. So we have the, the two from the 1835 here the, by uh, the Edo period artist. And then to turn, we have another screen. So screens can be many different panels. So our traditional pair of screens, we have a, a pair of six paneled screens. So here we have a single screen. They don't always come as pairs. Sometimes they're just single screens. This is getting more into the modern era and it's four panels. It's a little bit shorter and the panels are of a different dimension. If the pair of screens by Kishi Ganku represents tradition, here this screen by Morita Shiryu breaks so many of the, the traditional rules, but still is deeply steeped in the traditional art form of the folding screen. 1965, Morita Shiryu is the artist. This screen, the title of this screen is quite simply Dragon. Ryu, R-Y-U, the Japanese word for dragon. It is a highly abstract form of an aluminum pigment. So a black lacquer background with an aluminum pigment on top and then a yellow varnish which was applied to the surface of that to give it this golden color like the shimmering golden scales of the dragon. He has used Ryu, the Japanese yeah. character, yeah. painted it. I was sensitive. You, you're getting that, right. So this is, yeah, it, it looks like this abstract form but it's calligraphy. It's the word Ryu, the kanji for Ryu, dragon, in this highly stylized calligraphic method that to some of us it might even take on the appearance of the dragon. So the crouched dragon with its wings spread and a long tail. This is a theme that he worked with over and over again throughout much of his career. There's another pair of dragons on a single screen also in our collection, another screen by Morita Shiryu called Dragon Knows Dragon. No K-N-O-W to know. That's the artist's personal motto of a sort. Um, dragon Knows Dragon, which is, uh, you could say, like, uh, uh, know thyself. This, this very uh, introspective concept. So this is interesting how he has manipulated calligraphy, another time-honored time -honored traditional art form, to create this semblance of the dragon. Just as the tiger and the dragon are opposites, but they come together in this harmonious union, so too we also have modernity and tradition coming together, celebrating tradition through the medium, through the subject, through the platform and the themes, uh, but then also breaking those boundaries and pushing it into, into a modern era.